Alberta Premier Daniel Smith is taking some heat today for this exchange with American right-wing media personality Tucker Carlson last night. I wish you would put Stephen Guibault in your crosshair. <laughs> Is he an engineer? He's a, an environmental zealot. He happens to be our environment minister federally. Okay, that comment about the crosshairs prompted a swift response from federal cabinet ministers today in Ottawa. For Danielle Smith to bring the mouthpiece of the mega conservative far right to Edmonton Centre to spew hate, to incite violence against people who disagree with you, that's not how things should be done in Canada. This morning, uh, Premier Smith was asked about her decision to appear with Tucker Carlson. I don't do a screening test to make sure that every person that interviews me matches 100% of what I believe. Okay, so what will Canadians make of all of this? The power panel's with me on that. Vandana Cotter, Andrew Thompson, James Moore, and Shachi Curl. James, you were kind of dismissing this attack by the Liberals um, um, today in, in an earlier segment. What do you make of her comment about putting the crosshairs on, on Stephen Gilbo? I mean, the Liberals have compared that to inciting violence. How do you view what, what she said? I mean, the dismissing, I think, the political impact. But look, I grew up in the 1990s in the conservative movement where Tucker Carlson was kind of normal. And he has wandered so far away from that. You know, 80% of what he says is sort of perfectly fine political commentary. It's the other 20%. You know, he's become a mouthpiece for Vladimir Putin. He's become an extremist advancing things like uh, uh, advanced or, or uh, race uh, replacement theory and some really bizarre views. Uh, even at this event, you know, he, he sort of made a really ugly shot uh, questioning the or challenging the Prime Minister of Canada's uh, sexual orientation in a pretty crass and dumb way. Um, you know, Tucker Carlson, and the thing about Tucker Carlson is he knows he's doing this. Uh, he's mm -hmm. not just sort of a random conservative. He, he, you know, we know from the January 6th uh, and, and the lawsuit uh, against uh, Fox News and their, and their support of the uh, uh, conspiracy theories around the voting in the, in the 2020 election campaign that T Tucker Carlson doesn't like Donald Trump, doesn't believe in Donald Trump, but he goes on the air and he's Donald Trump's biggest spokesperson because there's money in it for him. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a pretty cynical guy who advances some really ugly views in exchange for cash. Um, and he, he's, he's not a credible person anymore. He used to be years ago. And so he's become this sort of, you know, bizarre caricature of of what sort of a right-wing person uh you know would be and he's making a lot of money doing it so i'm frankly surprised that the premier of alberta would share the stage with somebody with of, of you know his character and reputation he was fired by fox for lying uh and and in part of the lawsuit that fox had to pay over 750 million dollars in compensation to dominion uh voting for and um you know I, I just think he's a very dodgy person and and i think the premier of alberta should know better than to share the stage with him so so andrew what are your thoughts on that i mean james went through the litany of issues with, with tucker carlson and what he said he did make this you know homophobic joke about the prime minister last night and and look i, I know daniel smith has said i don't agree with everybody who does an interview with me um but this was a for-profit event, right, where Tucker Carlson was making money. And you go back to what he said when he launched his Twitter show. He called President Zelensky sweaty and rat-like, a comedian turned oligarch, a persecutor of Christians. I mean, I know you don't always agree with interviewers, but things like this are next level. Yeah, well, you know, to James's point, I mean, Tucker Carlson makes money by being kind of a right-wing, un awkwardly unfunny version of John Stewart or, or Rick Mercer. I mean, it's uh, sorry to Rick because I'm sure he's deeply offended at that. But, but you know, this is not somebody who is doing it for any reason other than to drive, you know, the margins to give him money, mm. and that's what's uh, what's at work here. What I thought was interesting was just how terrible Danielle Smith was in defending her own position last night. You know, when Carlson took on uh, Freeland and uh, was uh, talking to uh, uh, Conrad Black, Black pushed back on the accusations of fascism and Nazism. Daniel Smith did nothing. She just sat there and took it all in. Uh, and, you know, and I think that just shows, you know, a real lack of leadership on her part of either understanding what's going on in the moment or being able to actually position her own view as being something bigger and more than whatever this, you know, gross comedy is that is playing out with, with Carlson. So that, to me, was really one of the things that stood out last night, was just how um, inept she was at being able to defend her own agenda at the same, in the same way you know, that others like uh, Conrad Black, you know, for all that he's got issues, and we all know those issues, uh, you know, he at least did push back uh, on Carlson for some very uh, offensive and uh, clearly uh, right-wing American views. 
you know, Shachi, Daniel Smith is, is kind of a, a free speech, you know, absolutist, right? In, in the, the way, you know, she comes on this show uh, with, with frequency and she's always been generous with her time. Um, she's getting a lot of criticism from the liberals here. They're trying to link this as well to Pierre Polyev and MAGA style, which, you know, it, it's, it seems to be core to the liberal playbook right now. How do you think Canadians view moments like this or do they even care about something like what we saw in Edmonton and Calgary yesterday? Well, there's a photo from that event last night that shows Danielle Smith, Jordan Peterson, Conrad Black, and, and I think it was Tucker Carlson. Uh, and, and to many, many left of center Canadians, uh, that is a representation of the four horse people of the apocalypse. That is what the liberals are trying to tap into. But, you know, there is a massive risk for the liberals in trying to draw a straight line from Pierre Polyev to Donald Trump to Tucker Carlson, even to draw a line between Daniel Smith and Pierre Polyev. Sure, they've shared a stage before too, but you see how canny the conservatives are being around their associations with Doug Ford and Ford's caucus in Ontario. We've seen reporting on that today and as well with, uh, with the uh, Smith government in Alberta. Uh, there are a lot of C Canadian voters today who are kicking the tires on the CPC, who are testing them out, giving them the, uh, the sniff test, giving Pierre Polyev the sniff test, who do not wish to be tainted or shamed uh, with the with the, uh, the the brush stroke that a vote for Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives is a vote for Donald Trump or Tucker Carlson or that style of conservatism. So this is where I say it's a risk for the Liberals because it could backfire, especially uh, if Pierre Polyev and I think that the the pressure and and the moment is on him now to demonstrate in the many ways that are possible that he is patently not Donald Trump. And what I mean by that is Donald Trump is an insurrectionist. He is a defamer. He may well be a lawbreaker. He is an authoritarian. I wrote about this in the Ottawa Citizen last week. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a lot of things that so far Pierre Polyev has not shown himself to be. And so, uh, yes, good for, for motivating that, that left of center base that appears to not be able to come behind the Liberals in any other way these days. Uh, not good if this ends up being the sword that, that cuts or stabs them. Right, and just to let you know, the, the Liberals did call for the Conservatives to denounce Tucker Carlson. What he said, we have a statement from Mr. Polyev's office. Justin Trudeau and his out-of-touch Liberals are yet again twisting themselves in knots to distract from the hurt and suffering they are inflicting on Canadians after eight years in power. Trudeau's desperate Liberal ministers will say anything in an attempt to distract Canadians and hope they forget about the misery caused by Liberal policies. That's part of the statement that we just got from Pierre Polyev's office. Bandana, what are your thoughts <coughs> on, on this whole thing and how it played out? Um, I'm not surprised by Daniel Smith and the company she keeps. I think this unfortunately is um, conservative party today, not conservatives like James Moore, who I deeply respect. But the difference is, is that I don't think this is drawing conclusion. Pierre Polyev, like he uh, entertained the convoy. He has members of his caucus have sat with right wing politicians. Uh, he had like misogynistic tags on his YouTube. This isn't drawing conclusion. This is pointing out the fact. And what Mr. Polyev can do is actually just denounce this. And if he denounces it, guess what? That whole argument for the Liberal Party is gone. If you can prove to yourself, like, I actually denounce this, I denounce this, what was said, I denounce these homophobic comments, then yeah, all the tires are blown out on that argument that, you know, Pierre Polyev is importing mega style politics into Canada. This type of politics does not belong in Canada. And I disagree. I think Canadians are scared of this. Maybe not all Canadians, but the Canadians that that mega style movement targets. You know, feminists, uh, people from the 2S LGBTQ plus community, you know, uh, you know, racialized Canadians, etc. Like, people do fear that. And I think the Liberal government isn't just basing this on one argument. You see the constant announcements on affordability. You see the housing announcements. I bet you they start up their economic weekly, when the House comes back, their announcements and how they're tackling affordability. And, you know, and understanding that, Inflation is a global issue right now. It's happening in the UK, it's happening in the US. This is something that Canada is in a really good spot in the G7. But you can do two things at once. You can show you can govern, you can show you can address these issues, and you can still point out who your opponent is. And I think uh, that is good for them because hate speech, this is not a freedom of speech thing. This is not someone that we don't like. This is hate speech. Hate speech causes harm. And you can have an opinion, you cannot make up facts. And when you also, like 
Donald Trump, like Danielle Smith, when you, like Mr. Poiliev, if you are going to say that mainstream media is not real media or and you can't engage them, media is a very important thing in stabilizing democracy, right? And again, people can have opinions, right. but you can have facts. So this is not drawing conclusion. This is pointing out exactly what he is. James, how big is the appetite for Tucker Carlson, Jordan Peterson in conservatism? today? Because it seems to be, I don't know, a growing acceptance of it or an attraction to it. And I don't know if it's generational, if it's ideological or what it is. What's your sense of where this all fits into conservatism or is it just totally at the fringe? I mean, they're, they're very different people, right? I mean, mm. Jordan Peterson, you know, his book on his, his rules for living a productive and successful life, it's all pretty innocuous stuff. But there, there's obviously room for disagreement and all that. You do always have to of be course. careful in public life about who you associate with. And the enemy of your enemy is not always your friend. So you have to be mindful of that as well. But with, with regard to what Vandana just said, and, you know, and I respect the, you know, the, the attack that's coming and will be coming with more velocity over the year to Pierre Polyev, there's a there's a other side of that edge that liberals need to be very mindful of. Pierre Polyev is anywhere from 10 to 20 or 15 points ahead of liberals in the polls. He has a 15 to 20 point margin over who would you rather have as a prime minister, uh, Pierre Polyev or Justin Trudeau. And Pierre Polyev comes out dramatically ahead of Justin Trudeau, who, who your preferred prime minister is. And if you start going around and saying this guy is a radical right wing guy like Donald Trump, and he, uh, you start not challenging Pierre Polyev, you start challenging the judgment of Canadians. Pierre Polyev has been in public life for over 20 years. Canadians know what they see. They, they, they've taken him in. They've had an association with him for 20 years. They've seen him now as leader of the Conservative Party for well over a year. He's crisscrossed the country, and they kind of like what they see. And if you start saying to them that they're a bunch of fringe right-wing uh, weirdos like Donald Trump and his most e excessive comments and, and strangest followers in the United States, that that is a akin with Pierre Polyev, you, you look completely out of touch with Canadians. Canadians know what they see, they know what they hear, they know what Pierre Polyev and what he's not. And over the past year, the growth that he's seen in support with Canadians has only grown over time. So it's perfectly free to challenge him, but you cannibalize and hurt your own argument when you start uh, challenging the judgment of Canadians when they know what they see and you start telling them that they don't see what they, in fact, know what they're, what they're seeing and judging. So be very careful about that argument. A Andrew, just a final point. Do you see it that way? How, how do you view yeah, I mean, what's happening here? It's an interesting question. I don't think we're by any means starting to see Polyev mania across the country, and I'm not convinced that it's Polyev that's actually drawing people into that party. It is a uh, real concern, deep concern right now with how the Liberals are governing. Uh, and what the other options are. And so, uh, you know, the, the ball is, I st think, very much in the Liberals' court. I just, again, wonder to what extent they want to go into this, you know, distractive uh, debate or uh, this distraction around, you know, every time the circus rolls into town, uh, rather than think about how they actually appeal to those middle class mainstream voters, especially in southwest Ontario where the swing seats are. Uh, rather than dealing with this stuff, uh, you know, that is obviously firing up the Western Conservative base. Okay, uh, we're out of time. I, there's a lot more to talk about in this, and I'm sure this will be a topic uh, at a future date. I want to thank the Power Panel, Shachi Curl, James Moore, Andrew Thompson, and Vonda Cotter. Thanks again.